Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on memory. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so we're going to continue our series. This one's going to be, as we discussed, on memory. Uh, so this machine takes DDR4. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. It takes a number of different speeds, 2133, 2400, or 2666. However, I'll note that the 2666 is actually just going to clock back down to the true fastest speed, which is 2400. And if you're actually using V3 procs inside, the actual fastest, fastest speed is 2133. So there's no real sense in spending extra money on the 2666. And for that matter, you can actually put in uh, 2933 or even 3200, which is what you know Dell or someone would try to sell you right now. And uh, you know you'd pay for all the extra, and uh, you really don't need that. So really, I recommend uh, 2400 is kind of the sweet spot for the uh, the memory side of the R730. And again, if you're using V3s, 2133 that's the sweet spot for your speed. Uh, as far as the different uh, DIMM sizes, you can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or believe it or not, all the way up to 128 gigabyte. But there is a uh, key there. You can only use the 64 gig and the 128 gig with one type of RAM, which brings us to what type of RAM does my R730 take? Well, there's two types of RAM. You can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 2432 gigs, which is 768 gigabytes at 2400 speed. Whereas with load reduced, you can go all the way up to, believe it or not, three terabytes using 2428 gigabytes at, again, 2400 speed. So now that we know a little bit about the, uh, the differences, the, uh, what, what's the speeds and the sizes, uh, let's go ahead and install it. Uh, we'll show you how to upgrade it. Uh, we'll show you some tips along the way. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gloves and be right back. All right, have my ESD gloves and we are ready to rock and roll. All right, all we're going to need here is our RAM. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, put this to the side. We're going to pop this bad boy open. First things first, make sure your latch is set to unlock like any system you've been in before. All right, so when you come in here, um, I wanted to point out uh, on the air baffle itself, uh, one thing that is helpful for the memory upgrade that we're about to do is it has, um, and it might be hard to see on camera, uh, but right here, all of the DIMM slots are actually labeled. Now, technically, they're labeled on the motherboard itself, but this does make it a heck of a lot easier. Uh, you can just kind of put it to the side and refer to it almost if you need to, because uh, some of them are under the tabs and it might be a little bit harder to see. Uh, but in general, I just wanted to note that. So if you're at home and you're doing the upgrade and you're wondering what slots do I put them into, they are literally all labeled right here on the air baffle to tell you this is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2, okay? All right, so I'm going to take the air baffle off, just lift it straight up, all right? So as we just discussed, this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. CPU 1 controls 12 DIMM slots over here, and CPU 2 controls 12 DIMM slots over here. The reason that this is important, um, and you'll see it on the color coding back here, is that uh, CPU 1, um, and CPU 2 for that matter, uh, controls four memory channels and each memory channel has three DIMMs per channel. And what's important about this is that's you know how you're gonna want to uh, load your modules up because you want to basically keep your channels completely balanced. You always wanna start at the beginning of the channel and move to the uh, start of the next channel and then go back after you've filled up a full channel and then go to the second and we'll show you exactly how to do that. So before we do, I'm gonna take out uh, this fan bank here because it'll make it a little bit easier for y'all to see what I'm doing on camera. So you just lift these two blue tabs up and then you're just gonna pop it open and then you're just gonna lift it straight up, okay? Um, sometimes it can be a little tough to get those out. All right, that gives it a little more space so you can see everything that I'm doing on camera here, okay? So we want to go to the uh, first channel, first slot, okay? So right here, this white channel or this white slot right here, that is A1. So that will be where we put our first DIM when we go to upload this or when we go to upgrade this. And the uh, next slot, you're going to want to put them as A2, which is this white slot right here. So you will notice white is the start of the first channel, or the start of the channel. Black is the second slot in the channel, and green is the third slot in the channel, okay? So when we circle back over here, you're going to have A3, A4. So you got A1, A2, A3, A4. All right, then you come to the second channel, which is the black one right here. A5, A6, circle back to the outside, A7, 
A8, come back over here, A9, A10, circle to the outside, A11, A12. So uh, if you're at home and you're saying, okay, um, I'm not maxing this out, uh, how do I put this in? It's all about the channels, okay? So you want to start with the white as we discussed. So let's just say uh, with this machine, since there are four channels, I recommend keeping your channels always the same. So if you have two CPUs or two CPUs, I recommend putting in eight memory modules, okay? And again, you don't have to do this, um, but I like to put in eight memory modules and all the white slots, all eight white slots. And then if you go to 16, you put them in the, the whites and the blacks. And then of course, if you're maxing out, you just put them in all of them, the, the whites, blacks, and the greens. But that's the way you keep it uh, nice and even. And people ask us, uh, you know, why do you do that? Again, it's about performance. Um, think about it like this. Uh, you don't want one channel overworked doing everything. You want all your channels working for you and working at the same rate, okay? So it's really just that simple, all right? So now I'm gonna show you a couple of tips. When I go to install my modules, I like all the tabs to be open, okay? And the reason I do this, uh, it's a you know simple and silly, but my goal in here is to just get the upgrade done, uh, protect the motherboard, protect the modules, just not damage anything and make uh, the situation that I'm in uh, any worse. I, I'm, I'm trying to do an upgrade, right? So I just wanna make things better, not worse. So I just do things to protect it. So I don't uh, want any of the tabs potentially fighting me uh, where I go to put a module in and I actually just, you know, it, knocks it off or I hit a capacitor or just something silly because it's fighting me. So I always do it that way. Um, and the next thing that I always like to tell people, when you go to install it, there's a key on the dim itself, this little notch that you're looking at here. Now that key is important because it's not perfectly centered. So when you go to install it, um, you need to make sure that you have everything lined up properly. And if you look right here, if we zoom in, you'll see that there's this little plastic piece that's in the middle of the dim socket and it's different depending on which side that you're on, it flip flops. So what really happens is when I see people do this, they're in a good groove, they're going, they're going, they're going, and they go to the next side and they don't realize that it's flipped. And they go and install it and they break the dim or they break the dim slot and the next thing you know, they need a new motherboard. Um, not a problem you wanna run into. So I stress this point a little bit, just being safe um, and just taking a, a few extra seconds to make sure uh, everything's done properly. So in this case for A1, it's lined up like this. Okay, and the next thing I like to note is you'll notice that I've put the dim in. I'm not holding the module. It's uh, it's fully uh, inserted. I really actually I shouldn't say it's fully inserted. It looks like it's fully inserted. The problem is uh, that it's not. And so um, you want to make sure that the tabs have actually clipped into the side of the modules and pulled it down so that the leads are fully inserted. So you want to hear these uh, these two clicks right here those two clicks and if you look at the tabs themselves you'll see they've moved forward compared to the other tabs and this module is now fully inserted okay now even though I'm going to uh, completely max this system out um, we're going to go ahead and show it for the users who aren't we're going to A2 over here that we originally discussed all right so now we're going to come to the outside A3 over here um, and I will note this is where the key or the notch that we're talking about flip flops. Uh, so just be careful when you're coming in to install it uh, that you're making sure uh, to have everything lined up properly. Uh, very important. So we're just going to come over here. We're going to pop it in. Uh, again, click, click. The ones on the edges are my personal least favorite. <laughs> That's just a personal preference. All right, now we're going to come over here to A4. And we are going to drop this in nice and safe. Click, click. All right, so now is a key point in your memory installation, um, whether you have one CPU or two CPUs. And I sure hope if you're at home, if you have an R730, you should have two CPUs. This is a great machine. You can get some of the uh, CPUs we talked about in the first video. Uh, there's some cheap ones out there, so you should definitely have two, but that's a different point. We can debate that a different day. But if you only have one CPU, this is when you go to the second slot in the channel and you start using the black slots, okay? But I'm hoping uh, everyone at home that's using this has uh, two CPUs, so you wanna continue using the white slots. So you're gonna come on the outside over here to B1, and then we're gonna go to B2, B3, and B4, okay? So we'll knock that out real quick. Um, so again, just make sure you have everything lined up properly. Um, we're gonna drop in B1, and I'm actually just gonna click them all at the end because that's how I actually normally do it. And we're gonna do B2, make sure you flip flop it properly for B3, which is on the inside right next to A1. 
and then swing it around again. And we're going to do B4, okay? And you'll notice, again, I'm stressing the point, uh, but everything is in the white slots, which is the first slot in the channel. And the reason, again, we do this is all about performance. We want to maximize performance, okay? So now we're going to uh, go to the blacks, which are the, uh, the second dim slot in the channel, okay? And this is... Uh, back onto the uh, first CPU. So this is A5. We're going to swing out over here to A6. Outside over here, A7. Again, the key flip flops, just reiterating the same points, but just want to be careful. Okay. And then this black one right here, which is going to be A8. Nice and Steady, get it in there, and then boom. All right, now uh, you get the general point that we're going for. Now we're just going to keep filling up the black slots over here, and then we're going to fill up the green slots. I'm going to fast forward not to waste anyone's time, and we're going to fill this whole bad boy up. All right, so you can see we've loaded this up completely. Uh, we put in 24, 32 gigs. Again, if you wanted to put in uh, 64 gig or 128 gigs, you could go all the way up to 1.5 or 3 terabytes must be load reduced if you're using those uh, dim sizes. Um, this is a nice 768 gigabyte configuration. Uh, awesome uh, overall, going to be great performance. Uh, so a couple things. One of the things I like to say, at the end, I make sure all my tabs are closed. Make sure uh, for a number of reasons, because if they're sticking out, then you have a dim that's not fully seated, and that's when you potentially run into uh, a situation where um, you think you have a bad dim slot or a bad dim, it's just not fully seated. You start rotating around, you're wondering what's happening, it was just not seated properly. Anyhow, all right, if you made it this far, I wanted to let you know, we custom build our 730s, we work with data centers all over the world. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. If you are using our 730s or really any Dell, HPE, or Supermicro uh, servers in your data center, Give us an opportunity to quote your team. Uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, we'd love to earn your business. Um, and if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.